Hi guys, welcome to our latest Play the Relevant video. Today we're going to be having a look at ball mastery and how parents can help their young player develop their ball mastery or use their ball mastery at home. 10 ball mastery exercises that we're going to just show you and give you ideas on the coaching points and how you can help your young player improve correctly, what you need to look out for and how you can help them develop their game. There are three key areas that we want players to focus on when they're performing their ball mastery skills. We want them to make sure that they have balance, that their body weight is slightly forwards. We need to focus on their technique first of all, making sure that they aren't going too quickly, that they're getting their feet coordinated and getting the ball under control. And we also need to make sure that we are focusing on them using both feet consistently. There's no point in doing one foot and then moving on to the next drill. You always want to try and practice on both feet, making sure the player is comfortable on the ball and has the ability to move the ball from one foot to the other. The V is a great technique to start off with, using the outside of the foot and dragging the ball back strongly and firmly with the sole. It's useful because it allows players to start to move the ball away from defenders with the outside of the foot while keeping it under control. Using the chop allows a change of direction. So with the inside of the foot, the player should be chopping down on the ball in almost a scissors motion. Here we're looking at keeping our body weight slightly forwards. As you can see, our chest, my chest is slightly forwards and we're taking small touches, keeping it close to us and under control. You'll start to see that we use step overs a fair bit within the following ball mastery techniques. They're great for changing direction. It allows players to learn how to drop the shoulder and also become coordinated. So the double step over is really, really good for players switching from one foot to the other. Again, chest slightly forwards, drop the shoulder and have a little bit of bend in those knees. The main aim with the roll stop step is to make sure that the player can get used to moving the ball exactly where they want to, being assertive with it. Again, keeping the chest slightly forwards and your body facing forwards, our knees are bent, but we're also starting to develop that little bit of a drop of the shoulder, allowing players to potentially move on to changing direction and beating opponents with further drills. As a progression from the roll stop step, we're now using the outside of the foot. So again, it's that development of changing direction gripping the ball, but pushing it out of your feet with the outside of the boot. We're assertive with our touch. We're making sure that we are dropping our shoulder and bending our knees to give us the power and the speed in that change of direction. Here we have our third progression from the roll stop step, including the touch with the outside of the boot and then with the inside. This allows players to coordinate their feet, moving from one part of the foot to the other very quickly. Again, we're using both feet, making sure that body weight is forwards, knees are bent, and we're taking small but quick touches to shift it from one foot to the other. We're now adding in a step over into this roll stop step. It's great because it allows players to change their direction, moving the ball from one foot to the other with a quick drop of the shoulder, and with those knees bent. Now, in order to control the ball, you need to actually control your body. So this is perfect as it coordinates the feet, coordinates the body while keeping the ball under control. Bring the double step over into play within this drill here. Once the player begins to feel a little bit more confident with that single step over, it is really good for coordinating their feet and also getting their mind to think a little bit more. So just make sure they start off with a slower pace, make sure they're taking the step over on the correct foot and then pushing the ball away with the outside of their boot. As they progress, increase the speed. The L turn is perfect for players to use when they're under tight pressure, they have to move the ball quickly from one side of their body to the other. Now, we've got to be assertive. They've got to make sure that the player's standing foot goes slightly ahead of the ball or in line with it. 
If you do that, the player can then move it backwards and push it with the inside of their foot behind them. Our tenth ball mastery skill here is the roll stop step and the L turn. We're combining a lot of what we've already done in this final drill here. As you can see, we're rolling it from one foot to the other, quick drop of the shoulder and change of direction, pushing the ball out of our feet to then complete the L turn. It's really important to keep your balance, make sure the player remains coordinated and they don't go too quickly too soon. It's technique, not speed. With what's happening at the moment, there's gonna be lots of players missing out on their football. There's gonna be lots of players at home for extended periods of time. It's really important if a player still wants to play their football that they have opportunities to do so, hopefully out in the garden. What we wanna do with this video is help parents give players ideas on how to improve their ball mastery. Rather than just sort of just saying, oh, here you go, have a ball. Players can have a little bit of training if they want it. And ball mastery can really help them yeah. get outside a little bit in the garden during this time where things are a little bit uncertain. What we must remember is that challenges are quite good for the players. Sometimes players can think, oh, this is too hard, I'm not gonna get it. But we also need to give player a players a challenge to help them develop their game. Quite often players will struggle with something, some things and want to give up. It's almost a little bit like human nature at times. But what we must sort of emphasize when we're helping our young player, especially when they're at home, sort of being cooped up for a while, is that we must emphasize that actually it's good to be sort of stuck on these situations and these drills then they can learn even better and eventually their skill level will get higher and higher. So it's not a bad thing being stuck and our video here today is going to try and help those young players and help you as a parent give the players the feedback and some advice to help them overcome those challenges and overcome those situations where they're stuck to really help develop and improve their game. You can check out our 50 ball mastery techniques on our channel you will see plenty of techniques for the players to use that they can use in their own time uh, over this sort of extended period without football. But if we do this plenty of times, keep working on ball mastery over this period, players will really, really come on quite strong and develop their game hugely, allowing them to have better control, better coordination, faster feet, and much more confidence on the ball. We hope you stay safe and stay well. It's really important that, that obviously health comes first, but if players want to go outside in the garden and play a little bit of football in more of a structured setting, you can now help them looking at these drills and these techniques. Thanks for watching. Uh, we hope this has been useful to you and uh, please make sure you keep looking on our, on our channel over the next few weeks as we'll be having more and more individual drills, technical sessions for players to use in their own time. Thanks again and see you soon.